Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Dean Clark. Dean Clark is from England in the UK. Let's see what Dean has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Hi. Hello, Dean. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Yeah. I'm very well. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time to do this experience with me. Thank you very much for the interview. Um, just before we start again, Dean, tell me where are you from? Uh, Hitchin, Hertfordshire, England. Right, and uh, that's where you live right now. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. And what's the best? What's the best and the worst part of living over there? <laughs> it's like a spot, isn't it? <laughs> uh, the best part, I don't know. Just it's a, it's a, it's a complete homely feeling. It's, it's, it's always like I'm very I'm very fortunate and grateful to be where I am in terms of, of living. The worst part has to be the fact that we have no idea what the weather's going to be each day. <laughs> That's amazing. And um, what do you do for a living? Uh, um, I am an online coach, um, personal trainer, and a public speaker for mental health. Great. And um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, uh, before we start the interview, I'm just going to, I read something in your profile and I, in your Instagram profile. I'd like you to go through a little bit with me. You say in your profile, I change the way people look at their mental health and physical health. What do you mean by that? Um, so, at the minute, we've got so much stuff going on around us in terms of access to, to, to content and stuff like this. And it's very confusing for people. And also, I think that for myself, it's like it's giving people a whole new perspective of how they can look at their mental or physical health. So everybody's different, everybody's unique, and everybody has their own individual journey. So you have to approach physical and mental health with that level of diversity. So if I can offer people the diversity and the choice in, in, in looking after their mental or physical health, in turn, I'm going to offer them sustainability. Very good, very good. Okay, Dean, ready to go on a beautiful journey through your life memories, uh, your life memories and your point of views? Yes, yeah, let's, let's hit it up, let's go. Very good. So welcome to William and the Magic Box. lovely box full of random pump questions okay i'm just gonna play some music now just for us to get in the mood before the first question ready yeah yeah let's go let's do it okay dean ready for the first question yeah let's go right the first question is tell us something interesting about yourself um, I, I was uh, training to get selected for biathlon in, for Team Great Britain to enter the Montreal Olympics. Wow. When was that? Oh, long time. <laughs> About <laughs> ten, 10 years ago. Wow. And so, how was the whole experience? It was good. It's a learning curve. I was young. I was in the army at the time. So I was in the army for, um, I'd been in the army about a year by then. So obviously I was joining to be a soldier and then I got offered the opportunity to go and train with future Olympians and possibly try out for the, for the squad, which just didn't quite happen. Right. Okay. Let's go for the second question. Second question. Next question for you, Dean. Um, what does love mean to you? Oof. It's something that you develop over time. It's the little tiny things that build up. That's how I see it. I don't, I don't believe that you can just, you can be attracted to someone or something on that, on, uh, uh, that aspect, but it's the little things that you build up over time. And then in terms of everything else, I think it's just a complete individual experience. Do you believe that a different kind of love? Oh god, yeah, 100 percent Cool, I agree with you. I think we can we can love our pets the same way we can love our family and our partner. I think that all of them they come from the same place. Yeah, yeah, I agree. 100 percent Next question. Let's do it. Okay, Dean, just before the next question, tell me what's the best part of being a personal trainer? The, it has to be, as Clay said, Sam, it's the opportunity of just being part of someone's growth and development, but equally showing them what their 
the way they can maximise their potential. Right? Give them belief, confidence, change the way they they look at themselves mentally and physically. It's powerful. Being a personal trainer can be a powerful, powerful job. And what's the most challenging part of it? Uh, I think actually, if you to look at it in terms of like one aspect being business, you got you have to be a businessman as well. That's tough. Then on the flip side of it, it's you can take a lot of people's own personal difficulties on as well. So you've got to look after yourself, which which personal trainers don't think that like that. You can be a bit of a counselor at the same time. I totally, I totally believe you. I, I, it's funny, the other day I was talking to a friend of mine, I was telling him, I think all the personal trainers, they are psychologists at the same time as well, because people, they share so much with themselves. Yeah. You know, when you go to the gym, you go see people open up about their lives, about their dates and everything. I think personal trainers, they, they, they have the ability to listen to it, you know, and at the same time as well, don't take too much, because sometimes man, too much negativity people can share as well. And I think yeah, they are they're just just absorb, you know, all the, the, the energy comes from the other person. Another yeah, question. Let's do it. Okay, Dean, next question for you is, um, who do you count the most for help? It completely depends. I, I have quite a complex mental illness, so um, so I have to go to certain people for di different things. Like there's some people that I can go to for financial advice. There's some people that I can go to for my mental health, and there's other people that I can't go to about my mental health for other stuff. So it's it's a community effort. I don't think there's any sort of like individual person I go for any for for, for everything. It's it's a complete base. I've, I've got like a team of people, but I think everyone should have that. Absolutely, I agree with you. Another question. Let's do it. Okay, Dean, just before the next question, in your opinion, what's the big the biggest cause of mental health issues at the moment? I mean, it's, it's quite easy to highlight the, the events that are going on with the pandemic. Um, uh, the the, third, the 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 rest of the statistics haven't come out yet. We've only gone up to the second quarter of 2020. Um, but yeah, in, t in terms of it, I, th I think it's uh, I think it's more actually looking at everything outside mental health that's the actual issue. In terms of like sensory overload, the access that we have to social media, the access we have to incorrect content, the access that we the, the amount of stress that we have to take on as humans now, uh, emails your mobile phones, your work, your stress. So actually, I don't think it's, it's so much of a mental health internal thing. I think it's more external. I see. Cool. The next question for you is, what is a significant event that has changed you? Um, probably when I nearly lost my life to suicide, that pretty much changed everything for me. Uh, that happened a couple of times, but that was probably the biggest turning point, life-changing, changing event in my life. Um, if you can share, when was the first time that happened? If you can share. Uh, so that was in D December 2017. All right. And since then, you've been, you've been kind of um, doing like a, a journey, like uh, uh, with the help of other professionals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you go on a complete different pathway in your life. Like everyone talks about it as chapters or, or whichever way that you want to look at it or your personal views of how life unfolds. But yeah, it's completely it's changed the direction. So ever since then, I've, I've had to learn to live with with a diagnosed mental illness, which is complex, and, and learning to adapt to it to be able to help it as much as possible. I see. Okay, thanks for sharing that. Thank you very much. Another question. Ready? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Next question for you is, um, what is your favorite place in the entire world and why you consider that? Probably be up Ibiza, I think. Not, it's, it's got the, it's got all the sides. I'm, 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 I'm passionate about music, so obviously that's a big cultural over there. But also, it just has like, I'm not really, like, I'm not 
believe of things like energies and stuff like that. It's not really the kind of line of beliefs I go down. But then there's something about that island where you step on it, and it's and it's yeah. So it's, there's so much to the island that people don't see, and you just get to meet so much diversity and culture there. Um, yeah, that that's at the minute is about that sort of. I don't know what it is. It feels it feels like home. <laughs> When was the last time you were there? Um, about quite a long time ago now, because it's been about three years ago now. Three years. Never been there. Never been. Uh, <laughs> well, my bucket list for sure. Yeah, go get it done. <laughs> Another question. Okay, Dean, just before the next question, tell me a little bit about your public speaker uh, career. Uh, yeah, so I'm relatively new to this kind of aspect. I've done quite a bit of it in the past, but it was never really like a career path. I was always, I was always as a career path, I say, I was always asked just to come talk about what's happened in my life. But in terms of it, like still creating that that perspective and that that uh, outlook of changing the way people look at their mental health, um, using my own experience, uh, try, trying to break down the stigma of men's mental health, and, and that we we've, we've got it like internally, externally. Um, and then for primarily giving people like a mental health toolkit. So I talk about, about a series of uh, tools that they can apply to their own life that, that are offering sustainability, but also quite a lot of choice. Um, and also trying to make it like quite, raise as much awareness to, to how men, mental health, it, it has so much diversity, but also we need to treat men's mental health with the diversity. There's so many different groups of men that are about and can't actually talk to every single one of them the same way as we would want to and then ultimately uh, building up resilience uh, getting people to understand that we're a lot more resilient than what we think and uh, use like a four-step program process to get people to understand how they can move from one part to the other in terms of where they are in their life very good good one next question for you is um what's the biggest prize you ever won biggest prize <laughs> Probably my daughter, <laughs> I can say oh. that. Yeah, it's got, I, I say it's a prize. It was like, it was another like turning point in my life. The only unfortunate thing for me at the time was, is that I wasn't very well. I was quite mentally, I was mentally ill, but on the flip side of it, look at a positive, I think it would have gone the other way if she wasn't born, so. That's amazing, how old is she? Seven going on about 15. <laughs> Wow. And so far, what's the most memorable lesson you learned from her? Resilience. We can learn so much from children. That's for sure. We, we can, they're just so resilient, so good at adapting. So I, I learned that from her. She's very laid back. She's got, she has my attitude and personality that I used to have and that I'm, new, I'm, I'm trying to discover and bring back into my life. So she's got it. It was like it was given to her. So she's very good, it. very good. Somebody uh, once I, I read somewhere saying if you, if you feel sad sometimes or if you'd like to to um, to be a bit like to to be to feel better, just sit down with a five years old child or with an eighty five years old um, elderly person, yeah. and for sure you're gonna learn a lot. And so true, right. isn't it? Yeah, no, it's totally. It's like one has everything to look forward to, and one has everything from part like. Yeah, I, I, I adore that time, like I'll sit down and it'd just be, yeah, it just, I'm not with her mum so I only get to see her on weekends, but yeah, it's 100% right, I learn a lot, daily, daily for that. Very good, very good. I enjoyed the show so far, Jim. Yeah, it's good, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's different, isn't it? You don't, you don't think about <laughs> these questions. See, next question for you. Okay, next question for you is, um, if you could live anywhere in the world, where that would be and why? Uh, just, do you know what, it would be, it'd be some, I've not been there, but it would have to be someone like really rural, like New Zealand or something like that. I'd love to live on just like an outback place. Like I went to Texas once, I've been to Mexico a couple of times, but I went to Texas out to see a friend, I was like, this feels like home. <laughs> no influences, just get up, have some, have a couple of horses, live off the land. Great. Yeah, be, yeah, somewhere like that. 
good. Another question. Just before the next question, um, Dim, um, if you could pick one positive thing that um, um, you learned from this epidemic time, what that would be? Uh, one positive thing that I think I've probably actually learned the like the true meaning of gratification, or gratitude, um, and I, I, I think because it's happened for so long over the 12 months, I think it's a little bit more cultivated. So for me, it's, it, there's been so much time to reflect and actually realise that I've had to live with bare minimal, like not much money. I lost my business. My, 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 business didn't go well so for me it's like i realized a lot about being more grounded like that's huge positive definitely very good okay um next question is what makes you a unique person <laughs> uh i got bipolar <laughs> that makes it quite unique um i don't I don't I don't think it, I can't really talk to myself, talk about myself. Uh, I think in general, I think it's just having the ability to be in the position I am in my life now to talk about mental health. I think that makes it quite unique as such an individual um, and being able to use that. Very good. Okay, I've got three questions left for you, okay, Dean? Let's, yeah, let's go. do it. Let's do it. For the next question, um, can you share or a story, a fun story that happened to you when you were in the army? A fun story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know how far I can go with some of these stories. The um, but it'd probably be when I was in Canada. Uh, we got we we came off exercise. We, had a little bit of money, we was given a week off, we rented out a massive penthouse at the top of a hotel in a casino in Canada. We we were, we were only allowed to have three of us in there, so but we sneaked like 15 of us in there. We just lived, <laughs> we just lived like basically the hangover, like there was just so much stuff going on. We'd like somebody split like their, their ass cheek open. On the on the hot tub that was it like on a soap dispenser, we had to have paramedics come out. Like, oh people went missing. We left people there. We like spent with money. I got I got um, tasered, like not intentionally. Like it was I asked to be tasered by a policeman out there. Um, we took over the clubs and done like strip dancing and stuff. And yeah, <laughs> it was loads of stuff. It was, yeah, it was where awesome. where was that in Canada? Uh, as Edmonton, we stayed in the shopping mall pretty much for like five days. We didn't leave. We became like everybody in the shopping mall actually just started to know us, recognise us. Like we were going to like the golf shops and like I tried we were going around with Sedgways and stuff. Was, like, funny memories, funny memories. Yeah, that's <laughs> not... Okay, um, Dean, what is your favourite holiday season of the year? Autumn. Why? Because it's like it's where you see the most na like it's com the most natural change. Like it's 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 every it's like I, it's the biggest change of the year. What I believe, but like obviously it's spring coming summer, but it's just the biggest change. Everything changes. Yeah. I'll tell you something now. It's my favorite season of the year as well. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. Yeah. It's. I love it to see the trees change, the leaves and everything. Yeah. Very European. I always like it. Yeah, no, great. Team, two questions left. Yeah, let's, let's go. Okay, the next question for you is, um, what does your best friend do that comforts you the most? I think it's like, I think it's more what they've done in the past knowing that it's still there like if that makes sense it's, it's mm -hmm. more like what they've done in terms of actions decisions and choices towards me that it still just continues now there's nothing really that goes on much now 
but it's probably knowing everything that happened in the past is still there if it, if it was to happen again. Very sure, very good. Ready for the last one? Yeah, let's go, last one. Let's do it. Right, so the last question is, what's the best and the worst of being yourself? Best is probably where, I, where I've come to to get to here now. So probably my mindset like is very difficult. Like I've, it, it's, it's very difficult to be broke. I've never been broken. My mindset would have to be the other, the, 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 the other, other side, the other end of the spectrum would probably be as much as it's a gift. It'd probably be the, the my mental illness side of it. You know, it'd be great to not have that. But equally, it has its perks and its positives. But yeah, that'd be what it be. All right. Okay, it's on the end yet. Okay, Dean, let's play now the quick thinking game. So I'm going to give away some words, and you just have one word related to this one. Okay. All right. Let's start with religion. One word. One oh. word. Okay. Bible. Okay. Love. Lost. <laughs> Money. <laughs> Wasted. Family. Everything. Life. Tough. Vex. Fun. Politics. Can I swear? You can. Shit. <laughs> How about fear? Love it, but it's like, that's too. You can put it to one yep. word. That's okay. Um, friendship. Critical. Mm, I like that. Um, desire. Misunderstood. Regret. Brutal. Success. Define. Happiness. Uncertain. Wish. Believe. Um, and if I say United Kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say that. It's life. It's like, <laughs> okay. I wanted to say some other stuff, but not one word. <laughs> All right. And um, the last one now mental health. Overlooked. Very good. Okay, let's pretend now. I'm going to um, I'm going to ask your daughter. Tell me the most beautiful thing about your dad, and tell me something in your opinion that he needs to improve on. What do you think she'll tell me? She probably she probably they're not beautiful, but she probably say <laughs> muscles, <laughs> like strength, because <laughs> she tells the teachers that all the time. And then the other one be swearing. Like I'm very I, every now and again a swear word will come out. I I, I feel absolutely awful for it and. So, yeah, that'd be it. She'd definitely say that. <laughs> well, somebody told me when people swear a lot, it's because they're honest. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. The most honest, the most honest people, they're the ones that swear a lot. <laughs> oh, I'll say that. Right, so let's play now Dean in the magic box, and you can ask me a question, okay? Okay, Dean, you can ask me a question now. Why did you do this? Um, it's a, it was actually, it's a, a good question. It's a, it was a, 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 a project that naturally, genuinely came up last year when I was, um, when I was running. And uh, I always want to do uh, something that I could connect with people worldwide that I, ca I could, um, you know, listen to other people's views and, uh, and they could share as well their experience in life. So I believe that uh, that's that's platform, this uh, project I'm working right now, it, it suits very well because I've been doing these interviews with people worldwide and uh, it's so interesting how people, they have different points of view, different beliefs, different uh, memories in life. They are going through so much, uh, so much, they've been through or they still come uh, going through a lot of um, tough time in life and people sharing that and I realized that people they are connected with each other and people they are they, they, they are realizing that they are not alone out there. There are so many people going through the same 
positive things as well, the negative parts as well. So I think it's it's uh, it's just like a, a let's say a, a little a journey or a little um, uh, experience that people are are having, and I'm I'm having so much fun, and I'm I'm so grateful that yeah. people people like you they are accepting my invitation, and I'm sure in the future when people watch this interview, I'm sure they're going to connect with you somehow uh, regarding your your um, your um, negativity or your positivity, your experience in life. And that's what it's about. It's about people connecting with each other. That's the whole thing about the show. Very powerful. Did you have a good time? Yes, d- yeah, definitely. Like, do you know what? Because you summarized that at the end of it, it's, it's, it adds a little bit more substance to why you're doing it. Like, so I think that that was like was a good way of just sort of summarising it to see see what the reasons. I always want to know what people's why you gave me it. Absolutely, absolutely, team. And I think people are. I think we have so much to share. Of, you know what I mean? I think some people they have, they have so much uh, in their life to share with people, and I think this is a good opportunity for people just to talk about, and uh, people can uh, relate to that as well. We just you know learn and. Um, growing that's what we're here in life just to go and be a better person totally. just before you go if you don't mind to share a positive quote to a positive master something that inspires you something that inspires me would be it has to be that there isn't a single person out there that doesn't want you to do to, to suffer with your mental health alone Right. Okay, cool. Right. So, um, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for being so kind and sweet. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> All the best. Thanks so much. It was a pleasure. Yeah, mate. Bye bye. Bye bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show and I see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.